Hey guys, Crow Angel Gaming here, and this is actually the second time we try to do this. For some reason, it shut down last time, so uh, I'm just currently giving it a couple of seconds just to see if the same error I had last time happens. Uh, so far, so good anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, hi guys, this is Crow Angel Gaming bringing you the latest mods in the gameplay section for Sk Skyrim Remastered, Skyrim Special Edition, or Skyrim, whatever you want to call it yourself. Uh, basically, this week we're going to be going over the, the gameplay mods. I uh, don't really know what kind of stuff will be in here. Hopefully a couple of uh, quest mod types of stuff as well, but uh, we'll see as we go along. Uh, if you missed out last week's video, last week was the latest mod, so please check that out if you did miss it. And I will be doing, obviously, uh, the latest section next week as well, and then moving on to the graphics mods after that. <coughs> Excuse me, before I get uh, Yeah, so... Uh, I'm both thrown off now with the the the, the thing shutting down before I had a whole thing planned. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to say is, as usual, please don't forget to like the videos, support the channel as much as you can. I do appreciate every bit of support you can actually give. So without further ado, let's get straight into these before the live stream decides to shut itself down yet again. Okay, going on for the very first one, we have got the curse with a nice little. Uh, Punisher logo as the graphic there. This one's by Fullgoer2727, 27, who I have seen quite a few times on different mods. Uh, right. Uh, you will... Um, the, God, uh, the gods are in silence. The world's Skyrim is dying. Everything is dying with the arrival of the dragons. A terrible curse comes uh, into the world. The population is suffering. Animals are dead inside. Plants are decaying. There is no salvation. You have to start a new game to... Uh, for the uh, changes to take effect and and load the mod at the very bottom of your load order. This mod is a complete overhaul of Skyrim. Uh, so it says, please go to his page if you have any other, if you want to learn anything else about the mod. The curses that you can actually get are the curse of life. This curse disables natural health regeneration for all races. The Curse of the Mind, you receive 25% more magic damage when you use Magicka, if your Magicka is below 20%, Argonian, Khajiit, Nord, Orc, Redguard, Wood Elf, this effects. The Curse of the Body, you receive 25% more physical damage when your stamina is below 20%, this affects Breton, Dark Elf, High Elf and Imperial. The Curse of Darkness, uh, some creatures and animals become lethal, uh, lethal beasts during the night. Curse of the Blood, you suffer more penalties if you are injured, this is Argonian. Uh, curse of the Envy, you receive minus 25% Magicka and your Magicka re regenerates slower for Breton. Curse of Gluttony, and okay, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but there's a Curse of Gluttony, a Curse of Greed, the Curse of the Past, the Curse of the Pride, Curse of the War, Curse of the Weakness, Curse of the Wrath, and Curse of the Dead. Uh, then the different things as well to affect fatigue, stamina, magicka, health, injury, hungry as well, uh, hungry and thirst, difficulties based on a risk, reward system, uh, not novice to expert, levels, uh, some skills re require more XP to level up for balance, uh, combat, this basically is a complete overhaul, so if you are looking for something uh, to completely overhaul your game and you don't necessarily want to have the survival mode, then this one might be for you. Okay, uh, Creation Club Tweaks, uh, Half Exhaustion Need. This one's by Kion49. As if you tune in on a regular basis, you'll know that Kion49 is one of the, the guys that I can actually recommend enough. Uh, hey, as, uh, uh, as uh, Kit, as uh, Kit said. I'll just say Zed, there you go. Uh, all right, Zed. Uh, right, so. Yeah, if you tune in on a weekly basis, you'll know that Kyan49, Treehawk, and Micah Ghost are the three main guys who do uh, what mods that I come across quite a few times on uh, the PlayStation 4 mods. Basically, if you're going to get anything, I recommend checking out these guys uh, for something. If you're unsure what to download, type in one of these guys' actual names into the search bar and just have a look at some of their stuff. It is top notch and uh, usually you don't have to have a lot of updates to it as well or uh, fixes because they usually produce pretty quality stuff so again that was Kyan49 you can see whose name's on the screen at the moment Treehawk and Micah Ghost anyway uh, this is small tweaks done for the ESL file format 
uh, survival exhaustion need rate has been changed by this mod. So basically you do need to have this survival mode. Uh, you, you must have downloaded, should I say, the survival mode from the Creation Club in order to actually make this mod take effect. Uh, okay. Requests, no ideas, welcome. Okay, and this is basically... Oh, this is just basically a an extra addition to that. So if you have downloaded the Creation Club survival mode, uh, this basically makes the exhaustion need rate has been changed. So uh, it's only a little s small tweak, but uh, it basically makes you half the exhaustion uh, down. This one halves the hunger, again by KM49. This one will give you better, better hunger restore amount, so you're not running out as much. Cheers, thank you very much. Uh, tweaks for disable reduced carry weight as well. And uh, then moving on to something different here. Okay, next in the gameplay sections, we have got the Forests of Skyrim. Uh, bear in mind, if you are going to get something like this, then they do tend to drop some of the frames per second, the more trees that you have. I have the same problem on Fallout 4 at the moment, wherever you're in, a, 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 if you're basically building a settlement or anything like that, and you put all the trees around, your frames per second drops by a massive amount. Uh, it seems to be affected mostly by grass areas and also trees as well. So just be mindful of this. If you are gonna download this one, then it probably is gonna drop your frames per second quite a fair bit. Anyway, getting on to the mod. Uh, this mod has a generous amount of trees to areas that should be heavily forested uh, to make the game more lore friendly and to make the, the player feel like they are truly lost in the forest, try not to get lost. Uh, total amount of trees so far, 1869. Locations modded so far are the dense forest uh, in Helgen, Helgen Keep, Exit Helgen, all the way to the Standing Stones. Uh, standing Stones down to Pine Watch, Standing Stones all the way down to Riverwood, including across the river and by Anise's cabin. Northern area of a huge lake upstream from Riverwood and mild and moderate forested areas are Riverwood Town, watered down due to compatibility, but still adds a few more stray trees for aesthetic. Riverwood Bridge all the way to Bleak Falls Barrow. Mild trees further up the mountain, Riverwood Bridge down to White Run. Uh, uh, sorry, slowly fades from heavy trees to plain type uh, with aspen spru uh, strewn. Strewn about haphazardly. Temple saplings mixed with aspens leading up and inside White Run Hold added some but not down south Shriekwind Bait. Bastion area, uh, slowly working at its way to Falkyrie. So this mod will be updated on a regular basis. So you will, uh, as you progress through this, you will be seeing more trees. That's a photograph, it's not an actual gameplay. Yeah, so nice try there. Uh, God mode for PlayStation 4, this one's by Skyrim Jacob. Uh, this one's on its current, on its fifth version. Uh, overview of this basically is this is a custom god mode style mod that features the following changes and fixes. Uh, player is invulnerable to all damage. Kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit personally, but okay. Uh, one hit KO while unarmed. Uh, unlimited stamina, 50,000 base carry weight, 250,000 gold added to a chest in Helgen Keep behind Gunja. Uh, five times jump height, no full audio, player grunting. Uh, two times 2.5 movement speed, all skills start at level zero, all racial skill perks bonuses start uh, starting spells removed, uh, player added to most enemy factions that don't interfere with the main uh, quest completion, fixes that is done to this, uh, NPCs don't drop weapons on death and Talos blessing description fix. Uh, okay, so then there's a whole lot of different other stuff as well. So if you are after pretty much the ultimate in uh, uh, ultimate in God mode cheats, then this one might definitely be for you. Uh, okay, GT's Garden of White Run is next on the list. And this one's by Green Thumb 914. Uh, it's currently on this second version fix, so he's fixed the area of the wall near the front gate that was not lining up correctly. This is a vanilla game issue, but his attempt to correct it, uh, place goody coin bags around the city uh, should now be obtained and have the correct loot. Uh, corrected a few more light sources that seemed out of place, placed a bit more flora and minor tweaks as well. So yeah, 
Uh, this basically is a white run overhaul mod, and as he goes on to say, I wish white run uh, with all the water flowing through it had a better landscape that is better looking to the eye. Well, not anymore. This mod aims to make white run feel a bit more cozy and uh, green. Added a lot of floor, uh, but not too much to keep the clutter down. The whole city looks beautiful and makes it actually want to visit. Plants make you happy. One thing I can say with that, yeah, uh, I, I, as most people know, I do Fallout 4 as well, and I mentioned it before. Uh, one thing that I have noticed whilst doing a lot of the settlements, and it affects this as well, really, in some aspects. Uh, whenever I've used the mods to add trees and green, uh, add green trees, plant life, grassy surfaces over the top of some of uh, the dead stuff, it does feel like a completely new game. Uh, the areas do feel more upbeat and yeah you're playing in a post post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland and stuff like that but and it's, it's meant to be like that but you don't want to be spending all your time in that you like to have some areas where you can come back and just have a bit of like normality and i must admit these mods do do things like this so with regards to this one adding a bit of plant life and trees and a bit of flowers and greenery probably will make it feel a bit more pleasant as well. Uh, other features that have been added, uh, adds plants, so many plants, stashed goodies around the city for you to find, we'll add more later. Insects now spawn in lots of places around the city. Fish now spawn in the pools leading up to Dragon's Reach. Farm animals added with a stable and a chicken coop. Hawk perched in a tree that overlooks the market. Uh, light sources from braziers now show above the flames instead of random places. Patch seams, Patch seams in the structures and the terrain where you can see through the map. And compatibility should be compatible with anything unless it's a white run of hull. Uh, he did try to keep this mod friendly, so to speak, so, so some of the more popular effects uh, yeah, well, pretty much what I was just saying, this will probably affect other things if you have a white run overhaul. But you pretty much, if you, when you come down to these things, you pick one or the other, really. So, right. Moving on to Vampire Lord Enemies by XKillJoy98. Uh, again, this one is on its second version at the moment. This mod is currently still a work in progress, so it expects some updates whilst you're doing this. Uh, when Lord Harkon, Harkon sorry, sought the, to blacken the sun, little did, he, did, little did many know that he had a backup plan. Harkon has spread his unique embrace across Tamriel with the help of other vampires and even Molag Ball himself. Although reluctant to do so, he realized that power may pay, yeah, yeah, power may need to be sacrificed for his ultimate goal, vampiric rule of Nurin. Uh, this mod adds vampire lord enemies across Skyrim. They have a chance to spawn in the place of the boss vampires. Uh, there, they are. Huh? There are me melee and magic variants as well. So basically, instead of just coming up against Morg Ball and that being the only real big master vampire, you're now going to have master vampire enemies wherever you would normally find just a regular vampire boss. It just makes it a little bit more interesting and a bit more believable that if you're going up against a vampire lord boss in a dungeon somewhere, that it'd be a bit more of a challenge, hopefully. Uh, his future plans for this is the ability to gain vampirism with the Vampire Lord ability through combat, uh, better images for mod pages, okay. Uh, possibility more Vampire Lord types, vampires that change into Vampire Lords, Vampire Lords that can switch between melee and magic combat modes, so he's pretty much limited at the moment to one or the other. Uh, attacks on towns and random encounters, better balancing, removal uh, removing any possible leftover Harkon assets such as dialogue from the enemies, uh, better overhaul performances and functionality of the mod and possibly more as well. Bugs uh, for this at the moment, there is a bug where the Vampire Lord may spawn at Bloodlet Throne as a naked lord. Uh, this is a possibility due to a scripted sequence and a fix on the bug is being worked on at the moment. So there you go. Uh, TLS Block Overhaul, no, I suppose this is a gameplay one really. Uh, on its first update, uh, ever played as an archer and enemies get too close to really point blank shoot them. Ever find blocking without a shield pointless? Well, this aims to change all that. Adds a non slottable necklace you can craft on the jewelry that when you block with anything, it resists 10 magic damage. When you block without a shield, you reflect 20 damage back, at, back to the enemy when hit. 
scales the bash to max 11 plus 20 bash damage, starting with 10 additional damage at level 1, making bash damage over 100 with deadly... Ah, sorry about that, telephone going off. With deadly bash. Uh, be like Goofy of... Uh, hey, hey, uh, Game of Digest. Uh, be like Goofy off the Kingdom of Hearts, attack with your shield only by making the shield only options under iron. Okay. Uh, it can be upgraded at the armor table. Sorry, we got a bit thrown off with that. I should turn my bloody mobile off whenever I'm doing these things, but unfortunately, when, when you've got kids, you have to uh, keep them on in case you ever need them for, uh, if you're ever needed for emergencies. I do apologize. Right, uh, game speed improver, frames per second for PlayStation 4. No, sorry, for PlayStation 4. Okay, this is on its 11th update at the moment, so it has had a lot of work put into it. To get this mod working, you've got to mess around with it a bit, which is not always the best advertisement for mods, unfortunately. Uh, it has only got one star and 21 favorites at the moment, so be mindful of this. Uh, once the ring is equipped, you will be able to go into slow motion, go into sneak mode until you hear a noise. Go out of sneak mode and check if if the slow motion on player is gone. If not, repeat. All effects dispel upon unequipping the rings. Okay, so this is basically a bunch of rings improvers as well. But so the combat rings prevent non-project projectile kill moves, unfortunately. So he made two varieties: one that works for non-combat and one that does not. It seems very complicated for just a simple mod. Okay. More Radiant quests for the companions. Okay. Uh, on its first version, so probably more updates to come as we go. This one's by Ghost131. Uh, with the addition of the survival mode, you wanted to play as a warrior in the combat, uh, in the companions faction. Uh, it didn't take long until you remembered how fast the progress is this faction is okay so he decided to do something about this the companions faction takes contracts from the people of skyrim whether it is to take care of some local bandits or hunt down beasts in vanilla skyrim this is handled via the radiant quests that are required to finish before you can progress in the story i do however feel like the need to only compete complete one of these quests to progress through the story and considered haven providing yourself uh, isn't enough to summarize this required this that uh, the required amount of complete radiant quests are five five and four okay not sure guess guess what that i'll describe what these requirements up here below uh basically okay so this is just a more radiant quest overhaul for the companions i don't really need to go for all this you can pretty much guess where this is going to go and it just gives you a bunch of different quests in here as well as you can see uh the original requirement mets were one one and three and i'm getting bored of reading this one so unfortunately i'm going to move on okay uh vampiric eyes and overhaul survival edition uh this has obviously been updated since the overhaul of well but since the creation club edition of the survival mod don't really see much difference there, apart from the screen lighting. Uh, second version, values updated, blood cloak updated as well. Uh, this is the survive. This is the survival DLC version of his mod. Uh, for the non-survival DLC version, use the other mod that he has got on here. Uh, when Door Guard first, when when it was first released, uh, he was sad to see that they made Vampire Eyes a glowing hot mess. Later, he found a mod that reverted them back to the originals. How? Excuse me a second. My child is crying. I do apologise for this. I got, but I have to sort them out.
And I'm back. I do apologize for that, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, my daughter's going through her terrible tears and because it's uh, actually nap time, she uh, unfortunately is deciding to kick off today more than ever. It's uh, one of the things, unfortunately, when you want to be a broadcaster on like YouTube, uh, it's not a recommended to have kids, but unfortunately, I would not trade them for anything. <clears throat> Even though when they're kicking off like this sometimes, it is one of the things where you just want to say, Okay, anyway, moving on. <sighs> uh, Soul Rim is the next one on here. And this one's by uh, Gobno Writer? Gobno Writer? Okay. Uh, this is a, okay. He's been playing Skyrim and wanted new experiences. Now all the NPC phantoms and the players too. The soul is forever, bodies are perishable. Perishable? perishable yeah uh you never wonder what happened to Ald if alduin won okay so there isn't really much detail on that one unfortunately okay uh tmos uh the madness of skyrim playstation 4 edition obviously uh this mod replaces all races with the one true race of madness the shagraf race uh Shergraph race replaces all the races in character creation menu. Player is invulnerable, invulnerable to all damages, as a Daedric print should be. Two times the movement speed. Unlimited stamina, zero uh, in all skills, no racial bonuses or powers, no starting gold. Uh, Shergraph's chest behind Gunja in Helgen Keep includes Shergraph's clothes, Shergraph's boots, modified Wabajack with unlimited enchantment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should be interesting when you play as him and come up against uh, Shagraf. Uh, okay. Classic leveled skeletons. Uh, this mod aims to improve skeletons in the base game by recreating the way they are in Oblivion, ultimately making encounters with skeletons more varied and challenging. Yeah, it is pretty much a one-shot kill sometimes if you're using a uh, bow and arrow. Uh, the new skeletons and stats are as follow. Skeleton level 1, 220 health, carries one-handed weapon. Skeleton Guardian, level 6, 300 health, carries one-handed weapons and a shield. Skeletal Warrior, level 15, uh, 400 health, carries one-handed weapons and a shield. Skeletal Hero, level 18, 450 health, carried, carries two-handed weapons or bow. Skeletal Skeletor. The skeletal Champion, level 21, 650 health, carries two-handed weapons, can summon a Bone Man from Sorkin. Uh, skeletal health will alter based on the player level as well. Okay. AOS Archers of Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim Jacob again. Uh, this one, this is an archery themed mod that replaces all of the default races and replaces them with duplicates that do not have any racial bonuses or powers, zero in skill uh, in all skills. No starting spells and no items or gold to begin with. In exchange for the setback, a dragon bone bow and 50,000 dragon bone arrows have been placed inside the warden's chest inside Helgen's Keep. In a nutshell, uh, it doesn't matter what race you choose, everyone starts off with absolutely nothing except a fancy bow and some arrows. Uh, this one needs to be loaded close to the very bottom and if you're starting with anything other than zero in the skills, then you need to be placed further down the list. So if you're an archer like me, uh, I must admit then this one probably come in handy, but I've, unfortunately I've actually started my next gameplay run. and. Uh, if for those who follow both my Fallout and Skyrim stuff, uh, I will be doing a gameplay series through on Skyrim. I did one a long time ago when uh, Skyrim first released, and I didn't really use any mods on it. It was basically a... I was using it whilst I was doing the uh, achievement buff run, and I was doing my male, ar male arrow style of a character, who just happened to like look like me as well. Or as close as you, you can make. So uh, one of the things I've actually done this time is I've started off my, my character, I've built my character, so if any of the mods that I use from the, from that point on require me to start a, a new game, I'm not going to use them. I'm quite happy with the free mods that I've actually got to begin with so far. If a Creation Club mod eventually comes out that overhauls 
the designs, the hairstyles, the facial features of what your character can look like. I may, and it, it requires you to start again, I may end up having to do it that way. But as far as things go at the moment, I've got my Raven character set and I'm ready to be begin. I've got her to Helgen Keep uh, just as you first enter after uh, after the, the encounter with Alduin. Uh, and I'm ready to progress from there. That's where my full modded gameplay session is going to be begin from. I may or may not be using survival mode because of it being a modded gameplay for playthrough. I'm 50-50 on the idea at the moment. I want to be able to do a proper gameplay without constantly having to stop to feed the character up as well. So if I'm going to do it like I did with the Fallout with modded gameplay, I probably won't use survival mode, but I will use a multitude of the other free mods as well, which is, to be honest, if you're tuning into this, that's what you guys are interested in. You're interested in the free mods, not knowing about the stuff you have to pay for. So uh, I'll keep you up to date on that as I, as I go through. Do you get a weird grass and trees when you play? Depends. Uh, some with some of the mods I've actually got that affect flicker. Yeah, uh, I do get it on Fallout for definite. But the trees seem to flicker a, about a hell of a lot sometimes, and I have noticed the grass uh, does flicker. Uh, I, trees, I must admit, I haven't actually noticed in the Skyrim, but the grass, yeah, it seems to be like the wind movement of the tree seems to be uh, sorry the wind movement of the grass where it would normally s flick from back to front uh, t to represent it being uh well basically being like moved i do notice that it does go into super speed mode sometimes and it's constantly like flickering back and forth back and forth back and forth and then all of a sudden it'll just uh, it'll ease out again i'm not sure if it's anything to do with mods i think it's just the games themselves because uh, I seem to remember stuff like that happening even before the mods uh, came out but uh, I could be wrong if anyone else knows anything on that just, just let us know anyway a new beginning for PlayStation 4 by Goonmise I ever wanted to start the game with a certain playstyle guaranteed there are quite a few mods that let you do this as well so just be careful uh, Playstyle build, but gave up because you had to go running around Skyrim to find spells and armor. Really breaks the start of immersion you were after, right? After all this, uh, after all, that means you didn't start with that build technically. The mod aims to help with all that, and the, uh, basically, when, when you reach Helgen Keep and you get your hand, your binds removed, there are multiple chests containing different sets of items and armor to allow you to start the game with a specific build. Uh, these sets are not meant to last you through the entire game just to get give you a head start on the builds available or for role playing. From the very beginning, instead of running around lift, uh, finding stuff to start a build. There's so much in the channel, I'm looking forward to. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, and that one's to uh, Mr. 420. Uh, yeah, uh, what's cool? First of all, welcome to uh, the channel. If you want to backtrack on any of the videos, I have a Skyrim Mods uh, playlist and you'll find in there as well a bunch of the, the mods, mods showcases, which basically the ones which have been the most popular so far are the uh, Rain and Snow FX, which I've done like a mod showcase on. Uh, for that one, there is also the oh, Jesus can't remember what the hell it's called now. Uh, Nocturnal's robes, or as it was called on the actual mod uh, page, Nocturnal's clothes. I think that one is quite popular if you're playing as a female character, because obviously it's got the split right up the side of the outfit and massive amount of cleavage. So if you're playing as a female, it's a pretty good outfit to actually have. Uh, other than that, I'd say there's quite a few other ones which I've done, which are the Adventurer's Chest, which is featured in the Nocturnal's Clothes, and also there's colour-coded co uh, Nocturnal's Clothes as well, which you can actually download. That's a pretty popular one, which gives you, instead of having the base the vanilla Nocturnal Clothes, which are like a blue-ish colour with uh, gold trim or silver trim, 
uh, you can actually get ones which are all jet black or you can get ones which are red light blue and sort of things as well so yeah if you are interested in picking out a multitude of different mods uh, i mean this week we're going through one of the subcategories uh and then i obviously next week we'll be doing the very latest mods and i tend to alternate it actually in between every single time so uh, be sure to, to actually tune weekly because you'll get on the off week you'll actually get a uh, what's the latest mods and then the week after you'll get a mod in one of the categories next week sorry next week is the latest and then the week after we'll be doing the the graphics mods which are on there all right anyway uh going back onto this uh immersive conjure spells for, again by governor writer uh description uh, this mod adds 20 new spells to summon creatures all the volumes of the spells can be found in Vorengar's secret fire for sale uh, the list includes bird draga draga sniper draga warrior draga legionnaire frostbite spider ghost flame ghost frost ghost storm a horse saber cat skeleton sniper spriggan troll vampire werewolf ice wolf skeleton warrior and a priest uh, and legendary summon creatures, Ghost Baby Bone Dragon. Okay. Uh, ghost Labyrinth. Again, by Governor Writer. He seems to be another one. It seems to be quite good uh, on most of these. This is this mod is a simple task where you have to kill all the enemies and find your way back to Tamriel. This mod adds to, adds in Skyrim a huge maze that is very difficult to pass, like you cannot put. Okay, this maze for higher level players. Uh, the mod adds a few hours, days, months, a year of gameplay into Skyrim. The entrance to the labyrinth is located in the Ember Shard mine. So basically, this is a mini quest mod without really becoming a quest mod. It just adds a bunch of stuff that you can kill in there and you can try and escape from the maze as well. Alright, the Lone Ranger of Skyrim by Skyrim Jacob, another guy who's a uh, quite popular on the, the PlayStation 4 mod scene. Uh, like I said before, if you are looking for some of the top-notch mods, you want to look for Treehawk, uh, Cayenne 49 and Mica Ghost. Those are the main three ones who I would recommend for any mods that are out there. Uh, this mod, however, this mod creates a new archery race that starts off with zero in all skills and no racial bonuses, but in return the player is gifted with the best archery weapons in the game and enchanted with the best archery type enchantments all enchantments are taken from the enchantments already available in the game so nothing that isn't already attainable all items are located in the warden's chest renamed jacob's chest in helgen the chest where you get helgen's keep, uh, keep key if you chose hadvar uh, can be obtained if you choose rail off if you backtrack after entering helgen's keep when uh, to the left when entering so yeah basically like you can do any other time you can actually backtrack between the two entrances and you can loot both things if you have got the uh, helgen starter chest which i recommend quite a few, few times and if you tuned in for the survival mode live stream i actually showed you how to uh, ha bleh. i actually showed you a quick overview of what's actually in those particular type of chests from skill books to every potion that you can possibly get in the game uh helgen starter chest is perhaps the best starter mod that you can get if you want to just play the vanilla without any cheating so to speak it basically gives you every enchanted item weapon that you could possibly get in the game and all the skill books to start you off so you don't necessarily then have to go around trying to find all these different skill books to level up your character you get all the skills straight away and you can go off and then and do build your character the way you want it to be built straight away uh, this mod includes a whole bunch of different, different stuff, unfortunately, which I'm not going to go through here because there is quite a lot of different stuff. Right, Magical Staves and Staffs. Uh, okay, Magical College of Winterhold. And a small upgrade to the Staves and Staffs of Skyrim. Yes, you know the same thing, the tongue-in-cheek title. Just got a freaking spider drop on me. <laughs> it is really not my day for trying to do bloody mod reviews today i had a little mini spider drop on me from the ceiling while i'm trying to do a freaking mod review oh god if there's ever a gamer 
presenter blooper reel i'm just glad i wasn't actually recording video whilst i was actually doing this because that would, would have been absolutely piss funny um for a guy that plays skyrim and fallout and other games of like a mythical nature who which obviously has these giant spiders and stuff when it comes to real life ones i can't stand them <laughs> there you go a little presenter insight for you there ah oh, damn better warden's chest uh hide and iron icons uh, items uh, it can be annoying to go for Helgen Keep without even the most basic items, but uh, as I mentioned before, if you get the Helgen Starter Chest, you do get a pick of all these different stuff that you might want to get. Uh, without even the most basic items you need for a particular build, very, very annoying. This mod, uh, uh, this mod adds basic items to the Warden's Chest. The Chest of Hadvar uh, tells you to get armor from okay so basically the same chest as the one we mentioned before items include a full set of iron and hide armor all the iron weapons a hunting bow and iron arrows and candlelight a fury and conjure familiar spell tones this is an alternate version of his better warden chest mod uh, craftable firewood i'm not going to insult your intelligence by opening that one up uh, alternate fast travel for survival mode okay if you have downloaded the survival mode from the creation club whilst it was free i don't know if it still is because mine's not showing up as thing it just says owned on the moment so uh, I, oh by the way anybody who is after checking out what is on the creation club uh, without actually necessarily going on there yourself you will get 100 free credits when you first log, log into it so it is worth a while but guarantee you're not going to find anything decent just for 100 credits anyway but, as I mentioned when I was doing the first day of the Creation Club for Skyrim, uh, the, there are discounts that go on a week-to-week, -week, sometimes fortnightly basis. Uh, if you check out the Fallout Creation Club stuff, you will know what I'm on about here, and that they rotate the featured items uh, to sometimes have it completely free. So that's your time if you do want to grab something completely free and actually test it out. Survival mode was free uh, as for an introductory time, and uh, that's why I've actually downloaded it so I can use it whenever I want. Uh, sometimes it's better to download the free items whilst they're on, so it just saves you a bit of uh, time afterwards as well. Anyway, uh, going back to this, this is the alternate fast travel for survival mode. As I mentioned, you do need to have the survival mode downloaded from Creation Club, unfortunately, to use this. This basically provides you, as you know, when you're playing survival mode, you can't fast travel anymore, or you're limited to the way you can actually fast travel. This adds a different way for you to actually fast travel by enabling you to go to any signpost and providing you can see what the destination is on the signpost, you can click on that and it'll take you to that place. Just enables you a different way while still remaining immersive enough to travel instead of having to go on foot or by horseback all the way or a carriage to each of the locations uh, portable tool skyrim mode a, another survival mode edition should i say in order to use this mod survival mode from creation club is mandatory uh, as we said before basically it's the same mod as the basic version so detailed version here is omitted this mod adds a portable object that can be used as a magic scroll these items can be used by anvil this item can be made, sorry, by Anvil Blacksmith Forging. A category is the a category is the items of building materials of half ideal. So you can first create drawings and unlock categories. Okay. So it's portable campfire basically. Kill anyone. No more essential NPCs. May not work on a few NPCs depending on how your character has progressed. Recommended to use on a brand new profile. Okay, Lord Order doesn't matter, this will only conflict with mods that affect the eventual status of NPCs. So basically if you've got a uh, excuse me, if you've got a, a mod in there that enables you to uh, preserve the life of the shopkeepers or your companions or anything like that. Uh, if you've got one of them, this will conflict with that basically. Ancient knowledge perk fix. At the end of the Unfathomable Depths quest, you get a perk called Ancient Knowledge. The perk increases armor rating while wearing Dwarven armor by 25% and makes smithing advance 15% faster, or it's supposed to. 
Bethesda tried to fix this several times and it just never worked out for them. In fact, nothing about the perk works correctly. <laughs> Instead of increasing armor rating with Dwarven armor, it increases armor rating with every armor except Dwarven. And the smithing perk of the perk increases smithing effectiveness effectiveness yeah instead of increasing its rate of advancement so i decided to fix this for you guys and uh, since you can't use the official patch which fixes this things up yeah the, the unofficial patch by the way uh, is on the xbox and the pc version it basically fixes a lot of stuff that bethesda never bothered to fix unfortunately we've never gotten anything like that because there is a lot of asset stuff breaking in there uh which i think is absolute BS basically. Uh, the fact that we would get a game without getting the unofficial patch is an insult. But what can we do? We're PlayStation 4 users and we basically get shat on. Uh, RR Royal Nord Race. <clears throat> this mod creates a new race, the Royal Nord. Essentially, he wanted to create a race solely dedicated to archery. Uh, start a new game as Royal Nord with zero skills and here we go again and 100 in archery uh, with a normal Nord power and race effects. Chests are located in Helgen Keep right behind Gunnar uh, which includes some unique armors and weapons for a unique archery type playthrough. It includes the following items, bow of the Royal Nord, Daedric bow, 10,000 Royal Nord arrows, Daedric arrows, uh, Royal Nord clothes, Ulfric's clothes, Custom enchantment plus 400 health. Royal Nord boots, Ulfric's boots, custom enchantment 400 stamina. A Royal Nord gauntlets, Ulfric's gauntlets, no no bonus. Uh, use if you feel 2 plus 200 to bow damage is too overpowered. Okay. Uh, Royal Nord braces, you Ulfric's gauntlets. So this guy basically wants you to dress like Ulfric Stormcloak. Uh, custom enchantments plus 200 bow damage and uh, load order prefer preferably at the bottom as this mod modifies a bunch of different stuff values and some of the mods may override this if all uh, if all other skills except archery are not zero then you need to put it further down in the load order okay <clears throat> akavari ruins uh, it's just a little mini quest mod i think yeah, uh, thousands of years ago, the something of Akavari uh, conquered the entire empire through poison and guile. For 400 years afterwards, they ruled Tamriel uh, before every last Tassari, Tassari, I don't know, I'm not going to butcher it by trying to attempt to say that, was, intent, uh, was assassinated by the Moratong. Uh, but some relics of that... Uh, a time yet survive. An ancient Akavari ruin uh, covered by moss and vine awaits the next curious traveler to stumble through. Daring explorers and warriors might brave the ruins and claim the ancient relics within. The ruins of something 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 uh, is located northwest of Falkreath along the mountain ridge just east of the Twilight Sepulchre. Okay, increased population. I did cover this actually in the latest mod because this is one of the new ones. Uh, without going through it all, it basically this one will just increase the general population of all of the areas of Skyrim. Uh, so if you're ever tired of seeing like a barely populated area, this will basically make the population a lot more dispersed uh, without actually breaking any of the normal game stuff as well. Just training mod. Cuts XP gain in half, but reduces costs of training. Also grants unlimited training per level. So you basically, instead of only being able to train about four times, I think it is, or something like that, you'll be able to just keep training until you, your character levels up. Uh, now you have something to spend your gold on. This also gives you more choice on how to progress your character and game, because you pretty much need to train in order to progress. No, you don't. Hardcore Combat AI. This mod changes the combat AI for, for all humanoid NPCs. Uh, it's changed all the factors to maximum. Aggressive, defensive, bashing, power attacks and dual wielding is turned up to the max level for all humanoid NPCs. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, note this is just a little side project so he won't be supporting this mod very much and he's very busy working on the Great Realism Overhaul. Okay, so yeah, this is from the guy who brought you the Great Realism Overhaul and that is pretty damn good, I must admit. So uh, I will 
dot by once and I will blue mind to blue moon to answer any questions people have. Compatibility, anything that doesn't change combat AI for humanoid NPCs, and if it does, one will just overwrite the other, depending on where it is in the load order. Ether, a non-lethal poison. Uh, more concentrated spells. Dragon at the start. Okay. This mod simply enables the dragons in the world before the player kills uh, Mirima. At the Western Watchtower. Dragons attack giants, dragons flying by, uh, dragons attacking villages and settlements or the player themselves as soon as they reach level 10. It also enables the dragons that guard the word walls at the same time. So basically you can go and start getting the word walls before you even learn the word of shouts from anywhere else. Uh, the player will be able to learn words power, like I just said, unlocking them with dragon souls and shouts. It will be up to you to decide if you want to you want your player to use the shouts any of uh, although they normally do not know anything about that. Okay. The Greybeards will be deaf until the Western Watchtower affair. So will the friend who likes to send you letters. Okay, so basically my interpretation of this you can start learning your word walls and everything else that you can get to. Uh, bear in mind some of the word walls are quest locked as well unless you use one of the mods that basically relocates all of the word walls especially the uh, quest ones the main one i'm on about is a college of winter hold uh, in which you have to join the college of winter hold in order to get the first mission or a couple of missions in in order to get into the cavern where uh, the the dig site where they, they do actually have uh, one of the word walls there is a mod that actually moves that word wall out uh at to the outside of it so you can actually claim it without necessarily choosing to join the college of winter hold uh so yeah if you are interested in trying to get all the words of words of power uh before any of this then this mod might be for you it does seem pretty good i must admit that you wouldn't have to necessarily go to the graybeards uh straight away you could choose to do that as a later time the Greybeards won't summon you until you attack the one outside of White Run. So if you st if you stay clear of following up on that mission, uh, then you should be fine. Eternal Night, PlayStation Four version. Make Skyrim completely dark, and Eternal Night has covered the land. Now you should have no sun damage as vampires during daylight hours. Okay, uh, if paired with his Eternal Fog mod, it appears to look like as the second picture, that one. Uh, compatibility does not seem to be incompatible with any other mod. Load order as low as possible as usual, below any other graphics and weather mods. Uh, master executioner weaponry. Uh, cheaper face sculpting. sculpting. Eternal fog, which is the companion to that uh, little mod there. Improved sounds. This is just a sound overhaul basically yeah, a simple mod that modifies hundreds of sounds in a game from the volume of a river flowing to the sound of a sword swinging footsteps in armor sounding heavier many npcs have more variety in their sounds weapons in every aspect of oh, sound more realistic activities done by npcs like blacksmithing can be heard louder and further distances and hundreds of other sounds have been given a great much needed variety straightforward jobar playstation 4 a simple Khajiit follower also is a vendor and master destruction trainer can be found wandering a white run. Paralysis disarm and something or other. Human, uh, poison immunity stealthy. Portal to Oblivion is more of a little mini quest mod. Uh, it doesn't really have any major reward out of it but it is pretty damn good I must admit. It basically shrinks the, the way he's done this is by shrinking your character down to a minute level in order to keep the illusion that you're facing these giant uh, creatures in like a giant oblivion area is pretty damn good i must admit and uh, it is pretty worthwhile as you can see there that's an example of what i mean by these giant creatures you're going to be going up against whilst you're a little a uh, character uh, but if you, as you can tell by the cage and the surroundings uh, basically all he's actually done is put you as a a miniature person going up against regular sized things and it's pretty good uh this adds a portal to oblivion in red run's retreat west of white run as well and there's uh three levels of 
Daedric Horror, uh, Realm of Werewolf, a Realm of the Undead, and a Realm of the Dragon Priests, and there's a whole bunch of different other stuff as well. Uh, the portal leading to Oblivion is in Redden's Retreat Cave. Check the pic for more information, and there is no... Oh, there it is. There you go. And there is a portal leading back to Skyrim at the end. So this is a little mini quest dungeon. Uh, probably worthwhile, but it probably won't pr provide you endless amounts of fun. But if, you are just, if you've completed the game and you're looking for something else to do, then this one's probably for you. Expanding Game System by Ring. Uh, Dreamweaver Excursions. Okay, I was on about three guys earlier. Treehawk, Micah Ghost, and Kyan49. This is a collaboration between the three of them, the, the Dreamweaver series. There's Dreamweaver Ports of Call, which if you've probably seen it, it, it does feature pretty much on every single video that I actually do. Uh, it is a player home settlement set aboard a ship that can actually move about different places and is absolutely fantastic. I can't fault it. Uh, this one is their second main project and this one is called Excursions. Uh, this has been updated again recently, so uh, correcting minor issues reported uh, reported following by release. Updates old guides, including the new MFS follow and improves optimization and nav mesh as well. Okay, so as I said before, this is from the combined creative talents of Treehawk, Micro Ghost and Kyan49. Uh, create a new save away from the cave before updating the mods, see version notes and so on and so forth. It's pretty much standard stuff for any mods. Uh, this mod continues to expand upon the lore and immer immersive set forth with the Dreamweaver Ports of Call mod and introduces the character to one of the Black Orchid Guild's favourite Ports of Call. Commonly called the Smuggler's Cove, the proper geo uh, cart cartographer name of the location is the Emerald Falls and someone decided to message me whilst I'm trying to do a live stream. Thank you very much. Uh, the history of Emerald Falls has has all but been forgotten, except for those few scholars that have focused their studies on the ancient monasteries that existed here long before the flags and banners of solitude, or even Windhelm were names recognition. In recent times, the cave has become the residence of a large group of profiteers, from smugglers to fence, uh, yeah. From smugglers and fences, pirates and Nero do wells, uh, to merchants of exotic wares and master crafted items. The cove ha even hosts a Sigic trainer school, uh, the Griffin Tail the Griffin Tail Tavern Fighting Pit, a unique new TYOH governor, gro Governor's Mansion and a Dastardly Governor, the Shop of Wonders, QA Smoke. A master smithy and die station. Oh, actually, that sounds pretty good. Being able to change your clothes to a different color. Okay. As you can see, I've actually favorited this one. This is one of the ones I will be doing when I do my uh, my gameplay series, as well as the ports of coal. So yeah, uh, basically, if you are interested in this one, it's called Dreamweaver Excursions, and don't forget to also check out the Dreamweaver Ports of Call as well, because they are two of the very best mods on here. Micah Ghost as well is one responsible. If you did see my mods videos, I did a mod showcase for uh, one of his player homes, and it's called Bolgan Estate, Bolgan Keep, Bolgan Keep, Bolgan Estate, uh, something like that. Bolgan Estate, I think it was and uh, it's an absolutely fantastic pop player home uh, it obviously uses in-game assets because we obviously we can't have those on uh, we can't have anything outside of that on the playstation 4 at the moment so he's done a pretty damn good job <sighs> okay uh, any mods i would suggest uh, i'll tell you what, I'll, I'll come to those at the end uh, the ones i would suggest are the ones i've just mentioned as well dreamweaver smugglers cove and dreamweaver ports of call uh, and we're going to go through these quickly to get through to the end because we are coming up to the hour and I don't really want to go past that much. Uh, so we've got Grindstone Skyforge, time scale set to 6, advancing, advanced wizarding wands, improved class archetype immersion, uh, sarcastic dragons created creation club. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, business in Skyrim, uh, another archer starter ring kit basically divine disabled auto aim uh divine sprinting stealthy divine jumping stealthy uh forgotten dungeons this is one of the ones that i do have myself uh, although this is the uh the french translation version leaf a mini sprig and follower 
uh, Dawnstar Supreme, Dawnstar Overhaul, Zen's Hardcore Max Carry Weight, uh, Enchant Effects plus Lights, Combat Sounds and Attacks and Tweet, Become a Channeler, Face Sculpt to Relocate it. This uh, basically moves the Face Sculpt to out of the Wrecked Wagon into uh, a, a different location, so you don't have you, you don't feel like you mandatorily have to go and join the Thieves Guild in order to just locate the the the, the, the Face Sculptor. Uh, knapsacks, harvest sacks, uh, grey trees home, spells as powers, time scale plus one, simple banking, white run mage tower and overhauls, vampiric eyes overhaul for non survival mode, Skyrim map markers light. This basically adds a bunch of map markers, uh, like close to thing. Okay. Either you use Skyrim map markers light version or the original Skyrim map markers version. Do not use both. Uh, Teos, the art of smithing. Assassin's Need, parkour project. Secret Talon, Talon Shrine in Solitude. Ultimate Ultra Dragon Priest Mask. Fantasy Followers, uh, Dremora Thrall. Weakened Smithing. Uh, Snowvale Sanctum accessible. So you don't have to necessarily complete all the quest line for that. Pickpocketing max 99%. Uh, Navarra's Weighted Arrows. Voice of Madness, a Wabberjack mod. A Filthy Rich Merchant, just makes them obviously straightforward. The merchant's Filthy Rich. Uh, Skyrim Map Markers again. Uh, Reaper Unleashed. This basically makes Reaper actually a decent boss battle instead of just being completely pointless. This is in the Soul Cairn, by the way. Uh, unlimited char charge enchantments, neutralize a non-lethal alternative to attacks. Uh, portable tools, this is a Skyrim survival mode edition. Uh, skeletal necromancy. Dawnguard map markers, Japanese version. Uh, less loot, better fast travel. Carriers of disease, disease overhaul mod. And that one's it, okay, right. Uh, you want to mods I would personally recommend and these are the ones that I'm currently using myself at the moment if I go to my library right if you're interested in Marion Serana then there is an, a newish mod out there which I've actually done a mod showcase video on if you check back on the the mods uh, sorry the Skyrim PlayStation 4 mods playlist uh, you'll actually find it on there it won't be that many far that many vid videos back uh, the, the Marry Me Serana mod is a long overdue mod uh, which basically enables Serana to be married uh, when you can't actually marry her in uh, vanilla. Uh, and I, as I said, when I did the, the mod showcase video, I did it everything from actually proposing to her right the way through to the actual marriage, uh, marriage ceremony as well. So you can see that the mod does finally work. Don't expect much in the way of, oh, my darling husband or my darling wife or whatever character you're, 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 you're actually playing at. It just basically enables her to be, to, to be, uh, 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 enables her to, to be uh, married. And you do need to make sure with that mod that you don't have any other conflicting ones like uh, live with Serana or anything like that. Player carry weight increase. This basically makes your carry weight uh, good right from the, uh, the get-go doesn't require you to have any rings necklaces or anything like that and obviously 10,300 carry weight there as you can see on that s screenshot is something pretty damn good to be s starting off with and then if you find you've overloaded even more so than that then you can start using your carry weight rings and stuff on top of that as well but yeah player carry weight increase just basically adds a stat increase to your carry weight which doesn't require any other extras like like i said like carry weight rings or anything and makes it all really quite worthwhile overstocked and rich merchants basically if you're sick and tired of going to any merchants and find they're trying to sell all your crap that you've picked up throughout the various other dungeons and then you find that you've got to go to another merchant and another merchant and another merchant this basically increases the amount of money they have so you uh, if you have seriously overdone it in the amount of rubbish that you've actually picked up it enables you to just sell your stuff a bit better. Plus, if you're looking for something specific off them, they will have better stock as well. Hoods are separate. So this is a nifty little mod. It basically gives you a bunch of different stuff uh, in with the game as well. But it basically enables you to set hoods and armors separate, which you can do to some extent as well. But what this mod doesn't tell you in the description 
is, uh, how do we say, there's a <coughs> nude mod in there as well. And I'll just let you guys ponder that one for a little bit. Yeah, there's a, a, a armor in there which it looks like a piece of Forsworn armor until you put it on. And that's the most I'm going to say about that. Guaranteed, you look about as atomically correct as a Barbie doll. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking to have a bit of fun and uh, thing, then, yeah, you can make your character basically appear completely n <laughs> naked. <clears throat> Uh, Colour added nocturnal robes. Uh, this one is one of the ones I was featuring before. This one again by Kyan49, one of the reliable guys out there. Uh, if you are looking for the nocturnal robes and you don't necessarily want to have the vanilla, this one enables you to have a choice of red, light blue, light green, black robes. Uh, it's in the exact same style. The hoods are separate as well, so you don't necessarily need to equip the, the hood because sometimes it doesn't show your character's hair underneath and it just looks pretty silly. Some of the, some of the mods will actually let you do it and you, you can see the hood, but uh, on these I've never had the opportunity to really to do that. Without the hood anyway, the robes still look great. Uh, you don't necessarily need the hoods. Uh, there's a red one, uh, an orange one, a bunch of all the different colours as well. The chest is located behind the blacksmith in white run, and the, the 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 robes. The last time I tried these were not upgradable, but because the the robes are what they are basically, you can use a circlet around your head, or you can use some some wrist guards, boots, and if you are able to modify the the boots or whatever it is you've got on with it and put enough armor rating on it, you won't, it won't really matter what you have on uh, the chest anyway. Okay, smooth human faces, uh, female faces. This one, what, what I mean, if, you, if you're actually making a female character, then this one will basically smooth out some of the basic lines and creases of some of the characters, just makes them a little bit better, as you can see there, the, the comparison. The ones on the right-hand side are what your character would look like beforehand, and the one on the left-hand side is what your character looks like after. And you can see a quite a noticeable change in some of the different faces there as well. Uh, no more dead merchants. This is another one which I find essential because of how many times have you actually got a quest from somebody who happens to be a merchant, gone, done all this lengthy quest line to retrieve this in a massive dungeon where you've had to fight loads of enemies. You come back to the town and just as you get back to the town, a vampire attack happens and the person you were supposed to give the quest to is dead. So yeah, this one uh, basically makes merchants uh, essential so they can't be killed. Right, this one I'm going to focus on as well. This is a fantastic spell. If you want to have a load of fun in the game, as well as uh, it being quite useful, this is a res spell. It's called Resurrection, which obviously gives a thing. If you ever played World of Warcraft or any other games, and one of the things that you... Uh, uh, I once played as a healer and never again. Because <laughs> I was the, the uh, what's called I was the most in demand character in the game, and I was constantly having to res people left, right, and center. So I went back to playing as a dual wielding warrior or a hunter instead. Uh, yeah, this basically allows you to resurrect anything so long as they haven't been decapitated. Uh, one thing that I will say about this as well, uh, I the first time I used this, there was a vampire attack and one of the, I hadn't got the uh, uh, essentials, uh, essential NPCs on at that time. So uh, one of the essentials NPCs were killed. I was able to bring them back. Quest line that I had with them did end because they were dead. Unfortunately, it didn't resurrect and I couldn't start the quest over again but he was able to, to, to resurrect uh, the, the NPC then I tried it on one of the vampires after I'd actually looted them and I was able to resurrect the vampire the, the, the vampire came back with all his clothes all his gear and I was able to do a, 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 a death blow on him the second he actually resurrected again took all his stuff his money his potions his clothes resurrected him again and he came back again death blow 
resurrection, death blow, loot, death blow, loot, resurrection, so on and so forth, rinse and repeat. And I must have been doing it for about five minutes before I realised I'd got into like a habit here where I was just constantly killing the same guy over and over and over again and resurrecting him and looting him. But yeah, it was a pretty fun way to make a lot of loot. As well as pretty fun just killing the same poor vampire over and over and over again. But yeah, this one can be found, by the way, in the Temple of Kinnereth, which is in Whiterun. Uh, Elidi, Nordic Flame and Frost Mistress. I had actually downloaded this one whilst I was waiting for the, someone to come up with a Mary Serana mod. Uh, she's the probably one of the better looking characters in the game. Uh, so if you're not necessarily interested in Serana or uh, any of the other mods that are actually out there, then th th this one might be for you. It basically turns her from being just an, a, a normal... Uh, a, yeah. It makes her, instead of being a non-essential bard, you can now actually take her as a companion as well, and she is marryable and everything else, and sh sh stewardable as well. Craft everything if you're a good if you, if you like crafting pretty much everything in the game instead of finding your own loot, uh, then this one's definitely for you. Adds a bunch of different recipes to your blacksmithing skills that you can do. Same here, we craft everything. This one basically focuses on the Dawn Guard stuff, but this one carries everything in there. Uh, going back to the marriage mods, if you are interested in those and you want more choices and you don't want to stick with the basic choices of the people that are out there, this marriage alt mod enables people that weren't normally eligible for marriage, makes them uh, basically marryable, both male and female. Pretty much every male or female you walk up to, regardless of if they've got a husband or not already, will then say, oh, uh, you're wearing a amulet of Mara, interesting in marriage, are you? And that's a very piss poor accent, I do apologise, but yeah, this basically makes everybody eligible for marriage. Uh, cat smelt down everything again an essential mod uh, this one basically allows you to smelt down literally as it says everything uh, from cups to plates to steel cups to goblets uh, everything that you would find that is of a metallic uh, metallic origin it basically breaks them down into whatever that item was made out of so if you find a uh, if you find a steel cup Three steel cups or something will make a steel ignot. If you find an iron cup or an iron plate or something like that, it, makes them, it actually makes down, it breaks down into a, a, an iron ignot. If you find gold or something made out of malachite, then it breaks down into that particular thing. And basically, instead of carrying around all this stuff that you don't want to sell, uh, but you want to try and sell, it lets you turn it into valuable ignots instead, which probably will sell for more than the actual thing if you don't want to keep them for yourself. Female walk for war maidens. If you're sick and tired of people like, like Lydia walking like they've shat themselves or walking so uh, butch that if you did want to marry Lydia that uh, you're thinking, oh God, why can't you be more feminine? This basically takes uh, the, walking, uh, the walking style that that uh, character actually had and turns them into a bit more of a fe feminine style of walk with their arms down instead of their arms out or like a beefy wrestler. Uh, this one is essential though that you activate this mod before you encounter the females for the first time. If you've already met Lydia and you activate this mod she'll continue to walk in her traditional style. Uh, if you activate the mod before you actually meet her she'll walk with her arms basically down by the sides and the best example of that I can give you is in this screenshot there. The picture on the left hand side is before and obviously the picture with her arms down by the side is after. That's the female walk version. Uh, Gregorian calendar is an optional one. I put this in for myself just because I was curious what each of the seasons in Skyrim actually meant. This basically ch changes dates like Frostfall into things like September and stuff like that as well. Uh, Axe's pre preset pack. This basically adds a bunch of different preset faces when you're creating your character. Myself personally, I have the center face uh, for my character, which is on there. So basically when you're making your character, you go through all the process of setting up. And I've got, uh, I've chosen the center face, but I obviously do the hair jet black, take away the uh, face paint. So long as you don't alter any of the features like the fade, preset noses or anything like that because you won't get the face back you'll have to back out restart the 
the no, not restart the game, but restart the creation process again. Go back, say, pick Imperial, and then come back and go back to Nord or whatever, wherever race you found the face that you liked on. Uh, forgotten Dungeons. This is another one which adds tons of hours of gameplay. Once you've, uh, if, if you, if you like the dungeon raiding, then this is another one I would highly recommend. It adds uh, forty new radiant quests enabled, eleven dungeons, uh, and a whole host of different other stuff within the game. It adds more content than you you would probably ever got off Bethesda. <laughs> Uh, Nocturnal's Clothes, these are the basic versions I was on about that I have done a mod showcase for. Allows you to uh, to equip the Nocturnal's Clothes, as you call them, if they're actually Nocturnal's Robes. And you can craft them, you can upgrade them uh, to whatever your blacksmithing skill is. And that's basically it. Uh, the hood is craftable separate as well. Helgen Star Chest is another one I will absolutely recommend until i find something better because a helgen star chest is the best helgen starter chest mod that you can possibly get out there i see i i come across all these other ones that are out there and i'm sorry but they don't come close to this this guy put so much stuff into it and there's chests what well, i said before when you first go into helgen keep regardless of which side you you, you pick imperial or the nords you're not gonna be restricted from accessing this because the chests are in the the, the the central area where you have to pass through anyway there are absolutely loads of items in this every skill book every spell tome every enchanted weapon every enchanted armor every regular armor every dawn guard armor every dragonborn armor everything basically that you could possibly hope to find within the game is available in these chests if there's a pause when you try to open the chest, don't worry, your game has not crashed. It's just basically because there are so many items within the chest that it's taking a little bit of time to process it all. Don't think that your game's actually crashed. One thing I will say about this, there's two chests in every enchanted armor and every enchanted weapon. Do not take, do not pick the take all because your game will break. Oh, it won't break, but your game will shut down. And you'll have to go to a previous, previous, previous save in order to continue back on again. Uh, taking all will cause the game to just shut, basically, because it can't handle that much stuff uh, being basically being uh, processed at a single time. Uh, stones Barazaya, if you're interested in collecting all those Stones of Barazaya, this basically adds eight. You will need to go and see V's Guild first to get the first stone that you find appraised. But from that point on, there will be quest markers once you choose it uh, for every single location of where the other stones are. So it saves you having to do a lot of the Google, YouTube searches. You can just use this mod and go find them yourself. Undying Loyalty is a essential or non-essential mod you basically want this or you don't uh this one for me personally i like it because i was sick and tired of accidentally shooting lydia and killing her or whoever else <laughs> with, it, with, with me arrows because they were always charging into the fray whilst i was hanging back and shooting bow and arrow and I accidentally killed them quite a few times adventurous chest is another one i will recommend uh, wholeheartedly it gives you a ring with a uh, hundred thousand carry weight uh, actually in it the the chest is behind the riverwood trader and there's two chests one chest has got nothing but supplies in there uh, things from my like, armor ignots and things about 500 of everything in there so it gives you a, a, a nice healthy start these chests do respawn as well. There's a full set of enchanted ebony armor in there, which you can take disenchant the first time because wait a few days and the armor will come back. It gives the best possible enchantments for health, uh, armor rating and something else as well. I can't remember what it is, fire damage or something. But yeah, the adventurous chest adds, so it says chest, but it's actually two chests. So there's one with nothing but every possible, 500 of every herb, uh, I think it's a hundred of every food in the game 
and if you're playing survival mode it does come in handy because by the time you get to Riverwood your character will be starting to feel hungry and it just gives you something to start you off with a bit of food as well. Uh, by the way these mods, all these mods do work with survival mode still including the carry weight which is quite useful given the fact that the survival mode makes your carry weight reduced. And Rich Merchants of Skyrim is one of the ones which I have which again in combination with the other Rich Merchants mods it just means the merchants have got a better amount of gold to start with. Anyway, that's all the ones I've currently got on my library at the moment. I have got quite a few listed, as I said, in my favourites, uh, but I'm waiting until I get around to doing the basic other stuff as well. If you don't want to use the survival mod on the creation club, then I will recommend this one as well. Simple survival, eat, drink and sleep. This basically is a free version of the mod that is currently on Creation Club, but it does it's not obviously as immersive as well. Uh, fix the food value bug where you, uh, we're porting the, the mod over special edition raw foods now cause food poisoning. We're also setting the gold values and numbers as well. Uh, simple survival adds primary needs into your game, the requirement to eat, drink and sleep, or you will suffer penalties. To activate this mod, you must eat an apple, any apple. Uh, recommended at the bottom of your load order, this mod is incompatible with anything that alters food, consumable potions, or are not altered by the food. Again, if you've ever played, or if you've ever seen the other videos uh, from, our, from the Xbox, which is Frostfall, and on the PC it was called I Need, this basically is a essential mod. If you want to play survival mod without necessarily having the Creation Club stuff, uh, I can't recommend this one enough. It's, as I said, it's called Simple Survival, Eat, Drink and Sleep. And the author, if you're looking for it, is just called Worlds. So he's an easy one to find. It is absolutely fantastic. And it basically, if you don't want to pay out for the money for creation club mods even though they are technically the official mods i'm using my quotation fingers here uh do look on regular mods because i think you'll find something better and that's all i'm going to say on that so uh thank you very much to everybody for, for tuning in that is the end of this live stream and i will be doing hopefully some more stuff pretty soon uh i'm doing fallout wrap up uh, on the gameplay at the moment so the gameplay series for that will be coming to an end pretty soon I will be doing Assassin's Creed Origins uh, in the coming weeks I'll be doing a day one live stream and then I will be doing gameplay uploads as I go throughout it as well so be sure to check that out if you are interested in AC and I will be back next week with the latest mods so thank you very much please don't forget like the videos help support the channel and please check out the other content as well uh, there is plenty of stuff on there i'm bound i'm sure it's bound to be something that interests you even if it's something that doesn't immediately jump out you give it a watch i do try, try to put a bit of humor into some of my uh, the videos even if it's not always spoken i try to use my character to emote probably something that i might be thinking feeling at the time so there is plenty of stuff in there uh, check out the other content please, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you next week for the latest mods on Skyrim and Fallout 4. Thanks very much, love you all and I'll see you next week, bye.